Good morning, everybody. Happy Friday. We're live. We're live on YouTube. We're live on Facebook. RHC team rocks. Rocks. <laughs> and is ready to enlighten. Full of gratitude today. We're going to be doing some tapping for you guys as we tried last Friday. Um, we're going to be teaching, doing an interactive lesson today. So we will be teaching you how to tap while we are tapping so you can see how we do it, learn how to do it for yourself. And then we'll also have a video created up and on the internet so you guys can watch over and over so that you can tap every day. What have you got in there today? Like an abundance. Oh, of wow. Beer. Yeah. Is that not magical? Yeah. Like, I don't even want to touch it, but I want to touch it all. Holy cow. Yeah. Oh, I like that. I love those clear ones, but I do like when you can kind of see like the opaqueness yeah. of the crystal. You know, it's not, it's not glass. Right. It's its own thing. And you wonder how, I mean, is it like, Millions of years old dust speck stored in there. Yeah. Completely unrelated. Watching um, a movie last night on Hulu. And <laughs> this is a little bit odd, but it's Friday. So there was this um, drug dealer tripping out. <laughs> and his trip was that everything is in the present. And so um, his brother was talking and he was saying, well, yeah, she was in the kitchen. Is is in the kitchen. You know, it's present moment. Everything is, everything is here. It's everything happening. is now. Everything is, and yeah, it, it just the, uh, I was fascinated by it. The mind boggling of, yes, we are, in, we don't live in the present. Our language doesn't even live in the present right. when we talk, you know? And so if we can start changing some of our speech to represent truly being in the present, how much more we will be present. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't live in the future. The future hasn't happened. We can create that by living in the yeah. present was my, it was just, it was, it was a com. Well, this portion of it was a comedy. It's a dark movie, but it, um, it was like, wow. And to then take it to the next level of you have to microdosing is very popular now that, and that's not what they were doing. They were all out. <laughs> they were, but <laughs> But that, that's a form of opening up some of those, um, opening up the pineal gland, which is truly that, that opening up to the universe, the, um, I should have grabbed a different vitamin, uh, the ability to have a different awareness of energy and of the universe. I was just watching pineal gland stuff, pineal oh. gland stuff on the way this morning. On Gaia, we just somehow always. I know, always, we're always in, intertwined. Yep. But um, yeah, that pineal gland. And there's so many things in our society food, water, whatever it is, products, toothpaste, stuff that is actively blocking mm -hmm. the pineal gland from calcifying it. Cal it, truly just hardening. Yes, rusts it. And there are, I'll grab from Monday, there's supplements that reverse that process. You know, uh, truly scientifically, I mean, we're, we're talking on all levels and, and work, work in both realms, but that actually decalcify the pineal gland. And when your third eye is not open. And they were going in the video this morning. I thought it was interesting because it's really a series of kind of in, in, inner and outer worlds and the reflection of, of both within each other. This is enough coffee. So good. And, um, they were saying that everything in the body has pairs except for the pineal gland. Yeah. Everything has two sides except for the pineal gland. And that's mm -hmm. the one single third eye that is congruent basically in many species. Lizards have a third eye. Everything has a pineal gland because it's so basic and fundamental to being awake, being asleep. Right. And all those states in between and beyond that it's super necessary for everybody to have. But have like, for example, lizards have it on the outside ah. on their head. So it literally is actively watching from prey from above. Yep. But then for humans, we've evolved to have it internal. And I don't necessarily know all of the, all of the reasoning behind, reasoning why behind. behind. But, 
I, mm-hmm. I was talking to someone the other day about, maybe it was about to you guys, a portion of it was how you hear it quite often. We're only really using about 10% of our brain. I'm like, well, we, we function pretty well. We really only need, so this is what we're doing now. We really, really need that 10%. What is the other 90% for? That. You know what I mean? Is, is there other things that we are not experiencing, not doing, not utilizing? And I also think that our brain is getting smaller. And I would wonder if science in that, mm-hmm. because if you don't use it, you lose it. I mean, if it it's... yeah. Hmm. Yeah, it's just crazy. I wonder. Don't know. Tap. Yeah. Let's tap. Let's. All right. Okay. We we did like <laughs> I said. All my energy right there. I know. <laughs> we tried to do this last Friday, you guys. We had some complications with audio, video, both on YouTube and Facebook. So we did not get a good video. Lucky for you guys, we're gonna do it again. Yeah, we were unaware though. We had the best session. Yeah. We all tapped some things out. It was great. Fortunately, maybe for some reason, it didn't work for everybody. (laughs) (laughs) We got pretty deep. Mm, Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But I know we got a couple people watching. I think Lindsay's watching our massage therapist from home. Um, Yeah. She said she's going to tune into us. Yep. So if you guys are watching today, this is going to be interactive. Do it. You don't have to say anything this first time. But tap along with us just to see, find those points. It seems like an arbitrary place that we're tapping. But if you try it yourself, you'll feel a little tiny point of tenderness. And that is is the meridian. Yes, the meridians, right? Yeah. We're tapping on acupuncture points. Yeah. Um, so kind of a, a disclaimer, you can't do this wrong and you can't hurt yourself doing it. As long as you're not going crazy tapping, I mean, right. as long as you're not intentionally hurting yourself, <laughs> you can visualize it. Though, I can yeah? visualize. It. No, always be that. Sometimes I wonder. I, I tap pretty hard. Like, it's not the other day. day. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I really want this one yeah. yesterday. <laughs> but you, there are places that are more tender than other places. Oh yeah, there really are. So tapping, um, also called emotional freedom technique. Um, has been researched quite a bit to be utilized for PTSD and some fantastic results. Google those so that you have the scientific aspect of this. Our intention is to give you a little taste of it today and to get you excited about doing it and to have you go through with us to physically do it so that you know how simple it is. We've said this so many times that we know what's good for us. Oftentimes we know how to do it. Many times it is not difficult or lengthy in time. It's just, we don't do it. Work this into um, some time during the day, some, attach it to some habit. Um, my recommendation is right away when you get up in the morning, tap. Anytime you need during the day, we'll give you instructions on a PowerPoint in a second here. And then before you fall asleep at night, it sets you up for a fantastic day and sets you up for a fantastic evening. And those two just semi-awake, conscious, kind of subconscious areas, realms of our brain waves and frequencies are extremely potent. And so if you can be tapping some great vibes into that, it's a wonderful time. PowerPoint, to reference what I just said, a PowerPoint is an area or one of the points that we're tapping on on your body that is your go-to or your streamline to the brainwave, to the, the the power of what we're doing, the power of tapping. And everybody has one or two that are more potent, more powerful. And you can utilize those throughout the day to just tap right into, well, it's fine tapping is in a second, tap right into that instead of going through the full sequence. The sequence doesn't take that long. How long? A minute. A minute. If, yeah, if, a minute. if I'm doing it by myself at home, it's a minute. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and depending on what you're tapping on, if you need to do a few routes of tapping or a few times of tapping, a couple of minutes. It doesn't yeah. take long. No. Just get into the routine of doing it. After doing it for two, three weeks, you will, if you forget to do it, miss it. Mm-hmm. You will miss it. It'll bring you to a new level of energy balance. So what tapping neurologically is meant to do, um, and this is this, I'm shortening a very long explanation, if you ever want a longer explanation, certainly can Google it, but come to us, um, ask us a, a, a questions we can either get you resources or explain, or and schedule a tapping session with us. We do some really potent, intense, and we've had just crazy results, just 
blows me away the results that we have with doing a one-on-one -on -one tapping session with patients. They're, if you have any questions, ask. So we, well, we don't come into this world clean. We come into this world with memories and neurology from all of our past history. Have you ever heard anybody say like, um, just like my mother or, you know, that's, mm -hmm. that stuff is genetic within you. Um, and genes are DNA. So we're talking about rewiring basically your nervous system, rewiring your cells on a cellular level and changing your DNA. Simplistic and actually kind of extravagant way of saying that. Um, I'm gonna go with just the neurology portion of this. So tapping, we are wired when events happen to us. I'll use the example that I use most often, bicycle riding. So when you learn how to ride a bike, you guys remember I learned how to ride a bike. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's a lot that goes into that. You do not just hop on a bike and go. You get on the bike and you have to figure out balance. You have to figure out to make your feet and your hands and your eyes all work at the same time. And then usually somebody's helping you. So there's some emotional link to that too. Like, you know, mom was helping me hold the bike. And then that time when she let go and I didn't know she let go. And I was mad for a second. And I was happy I was riding the bike. And, you know, all of those things put together. Well, all of those are different neurons, different nerve pathways firing within your system, within your brain. And you don't have to individually fire those to ride a bike anymore. Your body goes for efficiency, what fires together, wires together. Thanks, Joe Dispenza. Give full credit to that. Um, when you do that, you get more efficient at it. It's because all those neurons, all those nerve pathways are firing together. So you hop on a bike today, even if you haven't ridden a bike for years, you can go ahead and just ride that bike because that pathway has been developed utilizing all of those things. You don't hop on the bike today and have that sensation of anger at somebody letting you go and then the thrill of, you don't, but that still is all a part of that nerve pathway. And you associate those feelings. It's because that is tied into that nerve pathway of something else. Um, that is the biggest piece of this you really need to understand. And then what we're going to do is tap on those acupuncture points that have been shown to release or unbind and rewire that nerve pathway. So let's say, I use a positive example, but let's say a negative example. You um, walked into your home when you were a kid and you always heard your parents arguing, right? You have a, your body tenses up and tightens before you even go into the door. And you may then every time you go through a doorway of a home, have that wired into you. And I'm kind of just using broad examples. On a subconscious level. Really, you're not consciously thinking yeah. about that, but it's wired in there as a response. And that's just one example, but there's so many examples because we go through life and we have all these layers put on us of emotional and physical ties. The body does not know the difference between emotional and psychological emotional or physical, psychological or physical. It's stimulus in, whether that be um, an emotion coming in, somebody yelling at you or somebody pushing you, and I'm talking about negative ones at this point, and then your body is response to it or reaction to it comes in a nerve pathway, goes out a nerve pathway. An example is like your boss at work is always yelling at you and your response is to create an ulcer. So that boss didn't technically go in there and create inflammation within the stomach. That's your body's response to it. But going into work, your tummy hurts all the time. That Those things started wiring together. So what we're doing when we're tapping is you get to go to work without having your stomach hurt. We're just releasing the negative. And the more we teach this to people, the more we're able to hone in on explanations and become more proficient, efficient, accurate at it. Um, one of the things that I've noticed is the people with the most layers aren't able to actually acknowledge negative things. Mm. They think that this is, um, I call it the excuse mode. So we're going to tap through crap. We're going to tap through negative things. We're not, we don't want to let go of the positive. I don't want to let go of the bicycle riding joy. I want to hang on to that. I want to let go of the anger of letting me go in the first place. And you can ride a bike perfectly still with that neuron firing pathway without the negative with it. People who have so many layers 
what they do is they um, want to release the negative, but they always say, but, or end, or they have an excuse. They're trying to justify, they're trying to rationalize. What I can tell you is don't do that. You'll get to this a lot quicker and release the junk if you just say the junk. Just, and you get to be mad. When we're doing this, you get to be angry, you get to be upset, you get to be emotional. You get, you get to, to be, to... you get to feel the guilt. You get to feel <laughs> regret. You get to feel those things, acknowledge. Bring it back up so you can vomit it out and let it go. <laughs> yeah. Not literally. No. <laughs> Ma, there's a lot of things that's happening. Yes. Yes. Um, so this is like an hour long thing. That we're that's anyhow. okay. Yeah. So, needed. Yes, much needed. Share it with your loved ones. Yes, many people need this. Um, I'm trying to put this in a pathway so that everybody understands. So I'm going to give you a summary and then I will go off mm -hmm. on tangents again. Tapping is deciding on a topic, picking a topic, and it's a topic that usually is negative. And I'll talk a little bit more. Don't let me forget about um, the body as an FBA real topic. So you're, you're picking a topic that we're going to talk, tap on. You will assign a number to that topic, zero being, it doesn't bother me at all, 10 being, this is something that I can barely function thinking about. Assign that number then we're going to state the topic while we're tapping on acupuncture points. We'll state the affirma affirmation statement and I love and accept myself. We'll tap through those points and all the negative emotions that come up and that you speak about. And you want to be saying those out loud if it's appropriate where you are, not at your workplace if you're tapping with us right now. <laughs> um, remind me to say safe place for doing this. Um, and then at the end, we're just going to reassess and just assign that number. So the beginning, oh, so it doesn't topic. have to be a real topic. <laughs> yeah. So we're all going to pick a topic. You're going to pick a topic too. What I can tell you is that that topic for me, maybe um, I've got this rib pain in my back and it's not physical. I didn't do anything. I've been working out. I've been have, eating great. It's got to be emotional. I know it is, mm -hmm. but my body knows what it is. My my brain, my subconscious knows what that is. My conscious might not. But I can just say, this rib pain is killing me. My body might go and remember that time. Um, let me come up with something for you. Um, trying to think of an emotional thing that I am. Has somebody stabbed you in the back. Share. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> well, so thinking about that, I remember falling backwards down at my parents' home, they were digging out where they're going to put on a new porch. And I still have a scar back here. I fell backwards down an eight foot hole. And all my relatives and <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I remember it. And cousins were there. And I wanted to be fine because it was one of my cousins that actually kind of pushed not intentionally at all. And so I just swallowed all of that pain and all of that just because I didn't want to blame anybody. I didn't want to, but there's a lot tied up. Oh, it feels better already. There's a <laughs> lot tied up into that stuff, right? And you don't think about it. Mm -hmm. I might not remember that, but my my system, my energy will take that rib pain and say, we're actually addressing that fall. You may have something direct, like, boy, my mother-in-law, you know, and we can <laughs> tap that stuff out. You can pick those topics, but it doesn't matter what it is. Your body will do it at the level that you can handle it. It will do it at the level of choice, of choosing what the appropriate thing is. So when we tap and I have pa patients in, um, clients in, and we're tapping, sometimes it's too much for them to say what it is. They don't need to. You don't need to. Your body will assign it. Assigning a number. Oh, safe space. This is something you really should have a comfortable area to do this in. You should have a comfortable space. Everybody should have their space. You guys are already going into it, aren't you? Yeah, <laughs> I'm like nervous, and you're like, I'm gonna... <laughs> the, the, just thinking about tapping has that effect. Um, I have, I have an office at my house. My office is my space. Like it is protected, sacred. I have um, essential oils, incense, plants, uh, bells, chimes, uh, bowls. I have uh, meditation mats. It's just an environment where I feel comfortable and relaxed and protected. And I have a journal, a notebook next to me, so that I can take notes as well. Make your space. Make 